Hi everyone. So what I want to show you today is how to create an index of a file directory with all the different files in it using Excel and Power Query. So in this example, what we'll do is we'll take this data sources folder and it has various different files at various different levels. So within the main folder, you have um, a few Excel files, a PBIX file. Within a database folder, you've got a couple of access files. You then have couple of more Excel folders and then you have some text files and what we'll do is we'll make it in Excel using Power Query so that then when we get some new data we can easily update it with the click of a button so how do we go about doing that is we go to in Excel the data tab in the ribbon and then get data from file and then from folder this will bring up a pop-up box to ask us for the file location or the folder path that we want to open. So if we'll just copy and paste or we just pasted the location of for this example, I've just saved it in the C drive under folder AAA. Um, you can browse and find the folder that you're interested in. So when you click OK, a Power Query um, pop-up will, will come up and this will show you the different types of files that you have within the folder that you selected its extensions some data information attributes and some folder paths um, you can load and this would load it automatically into excel as it is which is not bad for an index but what we'll do is we'll click transform and we'll make a few modifications to make it even more user friendly so when you click transform this will bring up the Power Query editor. And as you can see, it's very similar to what we just saw in the pop-up window. And what you have is the contents, the file names, extensions, date information, attributes, and folder path. And then on the right-hand side, you have the applied steps. So for now, we have no applied steps because we've not done anything. And if I, for example, click on this column, right-click, remove, you can see it's applied a step of the removed columns. So if I want to go back to how did the source originally look, what did I do? That's the column I removed. And this is just to, you can trace what you've done. And if you want to make any modifications later on, you can. So we've got rid of the binary column. We'll also get rid of a couple of the date ones because we don't really need all of this. And we'll get rid of the attributes column. So that's, that's not too bad now, it's a bit simpler of an index. And But what we'll do is we shall tweak the date created column because we're just interested in the date and not necessarily the time. So in the home, if you click on the column, home, data type, let's just click date. So that will just get rid of the time. So we're left with the date. And now what we want to do is we want to create a file path. So we've got the folder path. But what we'll do is we'll create a file path. So if you click on the folder path and the name, click in control to select multiple items, we'll add a column and we will merge these two columns. So this will bring up a merge columns option. So we don't want a separator and what we'll call it is file path. And we'll click OK. So what's this done is it's added in basically the file path of where the file is. And while we want to do that, it'll become apparent in a sec. So basically, we'll create a hyperlink to it. Um, that doesn't look too bad. I mean, if, if you don't want the extension, you can you can remove it. So that's that's not a problem. So now you can see we've applied various different steps. So from the source, how it looked, to the end, how it now looks. And you can play around with the columns if you wanted them in slightly different orders. You can easily change by click and, click and drag. And now what we want to do is we want to close and load so that it loads it into Excel. So just give it a sec. It will bring up the connector option or the queries and connections. And there's our file. Well, there's our list that we've just created in Power Query. And now it's in Excel. So what we'll do is we shall create a file 
link. And what we'll do is we'll do equals hyperlink this and we will call it a short name of link. So now that's just created a link for every single file. Advantages of that is if now I want to open the file, I click on the link and then it will open up the file automatically. So this was one of the text files. I can do the same thing for Excel. So if I just click on the link, you might get a message for the security options. And there you go, there's, there's, some of the, uh, there's the Excel file. So it just helps allowing you to open a file very quickly without having to find it, go and open it up. So now what we have here is the list as of the files that we provided now. What happens is if we get some new information, so you can see here we've got 2014, 2015, 2016, and 2016 only data. And we can also double check in here that there is nothing for 2017. So there's no matches for 2017 because 2017 wasn't provided in the file when we originally set up this index. Now, though, subsequently, we do receive 2017 data. So what we can do is let's just dump it in the budget folder with the rest of the data. And we'll just copy it or move it. I'll move it in this case. So now you can see 2017 data fits in here. And if we go back to our query, what we can simply do now is right click, refresh, give it a sec. And there you can see 2017 data has been added to the list. We do just need to play around with the link just to make sure that they do become hyperlinks. And that's it. So now if I click on 2017 data, this will open the file. So this is the advantage of doing it in Power Query, because if not, what you would have needed to do is do it manually, find the file name, copy it for the location, doing it manually. And in this case, okay, we've got six files, but you could have thousands of files and it could take you quite a while. So I'd suggest doing it in Power Query. So I hope you found that useful. And if you've got any questions, just leave a comment in the comment section. Thanks very much for watching.